Hello, everybody. Welcome to our third installment of Equipping Witnesses. And in this session, we're going to talk about doing a treasure hunt. We're going to talk about a strategy that I came up with many years ago, and it's just gone all around the world to equip people, to, to help people to have divine encounters led by the Holy Spirit that lead to divine encounters. Okay, so, so in this session, I want you to understand that every single person in the world is a treasure to God. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever would believe in him would have eternal life. And so as we start in this session, it's just really important to know that God sees every single person on the earth as his treasure. It, you know, regardless of ethnicity, regardless of social status, regardless of sin factor. I mean, we were all sinners and Christ died for us. And so in his eyes, he has treasures hidden all around, and it's our job as treasure hunters to go and find them. Now, how do you treat a treasure? If, if every single person on the earth is a treasure to God, then I guess the next question we have to ask ourselves is, well, how do you treat a treasure? I don't know about you, but it, you know, my wife is a treasure to me, and I treat her with honor. I treat her with respect. I care for her. I want to demonstrate love to her. I want to serve her. And I want to encourage you that in the same way, when we're meeting people out and about as we're witnessing, if we look at them through the lens of the Father and realize they're his treasures and therefore our treasures, we will actually treat them with such respect and honor. We'll, we'll try to help them into the kingdom as opposed to pushing them into the kingdom. And so... Doing the treasure hunt begins with each one of us understanding that the people we're ministering to, the people we're witnessing to are God's treasures, and we're treating them as such. Now, in Acts chapter 9, we find this guy named Ananias, and he's praying. Now, this is a different Ananias than in Acts chapter 5, who was killed after they lied to the Holy Spirit. Okay, Ananias was a pretty common name back then. So Ananias is praying, uh, and Jesus appears to him, and he says, go. Now, I want, to, I want to just stop right there for a second. Jesus is always saying go. He didn't say come and go and make disciples. He said go and make disciples, right? He's always wanting us to go. The question is whether or not we'll go. And so here's Ananias in the prayer, his prayer chapel, his prayer room. He's seeking God, and Jesus appears to him and says, go. And what is Ananias' first response? Ah, no, I can't do that. I'm not an evangelist. I'm not, I, I'm not equipped to do this. I, haven't you heard about what's going on with this guy, Paul, Saul? I mean, he's killing people. I can't do this. Like, no, I'm an intercessor. Jesus says, go. He doesn't even say, well, you know, like, he doesn't try to like give him an argument or anything. He just says, go again. And so he says, listen, I want you to go to this guy on Straight Street, which is a location, and I want you to find Saul, who we also know as Paul, his Greek name. Saul is Hebrew name. I want you to go find Saul, and he's blind, and he needs a miracle. He needs to be healed. And then I want you to tell him all about my good plans and purposes for him, the good news. I want you to tell him what he's going to do for me. And so Ananias finally gets up and goes, and goes to Straight Street, and he finds this guy named Saul, who's blind, heals him, and tells him all about what Jesus has in store for him, the good news. And we know from that encounter, that first treasure hunt that happened in Scripture, in the book of Acts, chapter 9, that Ananias, because he took some risk and crossed over the chicken line, went out looking for a lost treasure, found Saul, who we now know as the Apostle Paul, who's responsible for the development of all of Western civilization Christianity. I mean, like, we're sitting here. We're doing this training right now. We're going to be reaching people all around us because Ananias took risk to find a lost treasure in Saul, who we now know as Paul, his Greek name, who became the missionary to Western civilization and brought Jesus into culture in Greece and beyond. All because Ananias was a treasure hunter. 
Each one of us is called to be a treasure hunter. And in order to be a treasure hunter, you have to have a treasure map. So we're going to actually provide a treasure map for download uh, along with this video. You can just go and download it onto your phone or you can make a copy of it. And in this treasure map, what you're going to find are five categories. You're going to find a location and six locations or uh, yeah, six locations that you can write down. So you might write down park, you might write down bench, you might write down store, Walmart, you know, whatever, six locations. And then the second category is you're going to write down six names. Uh, the third category, you're going to write down what somebody might be wearing. Now it can relate to one person or six different people or one clothing article like a blue sweater could relate to six different people on your treasure hunt. But we want you to write down six pieces of, like articles of clothing or like something like a tattoo. Like one time I wrote down fish tattoo and I was ministering to this like, group of people and I said, well, you know, I've got fish tattoo on my treasure map here after striking out on several other clues. And the one guy pulls up his, his pant leg and on his calf is a fish tattoo. And because I had written down fish tattoo as an article of clothing or something that they were wearing, like all five of these people got saved because they couldn't believe that I would write down the stuff. And then I had a bunch of other clues for them as well. So what they might be wearing, what they might look like. And then the, the, the fourth category is what they need help for. They might need help. You know, they're depressed. Maybe they're, they need a job. Maybe somebody in their family has died and they're grieving. Maybe they need healing in their body. Uh, maybe they just need an encouraging word about a job. Maybe they, they need a prophetic word about a job opportunity that's going to come or something like that. So write down what they need help for, what they need prayer for. And then in the fifth category, six clues on something unusual that doesn't fit in the four top categories like balloon, pizza, flat tire, whatever that may be that would spur somebody on. Like I was witnessing to somebody in this treasure hunt one time and and uh, we were going through this whole list and they had all these different clues. And I had put siren in the unusual category. And I'm asking them if they would like to receive Jesus. And ah, I don't know, like, like this is kind of crazy. And all of a sudden, an ambulance went by with its siren blaring. And I turned my treasure map around again. I said, look at that siren. They go, all right, we don't need any more proof. We want Jesus. And so the treasure map, is to work as like a sign and a wonder for the non-believer. But I can tell you this, it also works for the believer. It also works for me. Like I get like totally like excited when I when I've heard from the Holy Spirit and I write down these seemingly random clues that the Holy Spirit is giving me because let's say we have the mind of Christ. So to think that you don't have the mind of Christ, like that's an old testament concept written to like like rebellious Israel, like you can't hear the word, word of the Lord, you don't understand the way he understands, and all that kind of stuff. No, no, we have the mind of Christ, so Holy Spirit's going to speak to us. And when I find those clues, I'm encouraged, like, wow, I really did hear. I thought this was all random stuff, but actually Holy Spirit has me on a treasure hunt here, revealing these clues and helping me find these clues. And he wants to open up people's hearts and lives. So it's a sign and a wonder to the unbeliever. It's also a sign and a wonder to us, and it gives us more confidence that God's really in this to help us in this process. Now, when you're doing the treasure hunt, you can do it in, in individually, like take your own treasure map and, and find the people who are on your, your treasure map through the clues that Holy Spirit gives you. Or you can do it with team members. And it's really a lot of fun to do it with family. Like kids are the best at this because when they're writing down clues, they don't second guess. Like, like John, like John, like, oh, that's my uncle's name. I'm not going to write that down. Whereas a kid, well, I hear, here's John. Well, they don't even say, like, they don't even think like, well, did the Holy Spirit actually say that to me? They just write it down. And so I want to encourage you, like, do this with a family, uh, with your family, do it with friends, or, or and you can do it by yourself. So I want to encourage you, though, as you're doing the treasure map, that it's so important not to think this through. It's not about prayer and fasting before you write down each clue. No, you've already done all that kind of stuff. Now it's just taking risks to write down something you're, you're sensing Holy Spirit 
want you to write. It could be in a, a, a word that you see floating in the air, so to speak, in your imagination. Or, and by the way, our imagination, you know, there's vain imagination and then there's God imagination. And Holy Spirit gives us ideas. He gives us downloads of words of knowledge. And that's what these are, words of knowledge that Holy Spirit is giving us to find as, as clues to find these lost treasures. Um, I'll never forget, I was in London uh, doing a training of treasure hunting, and I was taking out these pastors and leaders, and, and I was leading about eight of them, and I had this name, one of the names on my treasure map was John. So I was going around and asking everybody, hey, is your name John? And I was rejected like 15 times. I got to the point where I was like, well, well, maybe you're, you know, it's Johanna. And I was uh, trying to find a Johanna. And finally, I just got so frustrated being rejected and so like, like just uh, fed up. I, my son was helping me and I said, Chad, I want you to lead these pastors for a while because I can't find anybody on my treasure map here. So now I'm standing in the back, kind of walking behind and we're walking through these rows of restaurants with outside seating and and I'm kind of like, oh, I can't believe it. I didn't find any of my clues. And, and all of a sudden, I walk by this table, and the Holy Spirit says, go back and ask if one of their names is John. I said, no. You go ask, God. <laughs> I'm done with this. He said, no, go back and ask. And I'm like, okay, well, Holy Spirit, you're going to have to like give me a lot of courage right now and motivation. All of a sudden, I just feel his presence so thick. It, I just It just turned me around, and I went back, and there were, Three guys in their early 20s and two gals in their early 20s sitting drinking beer at this restaurant open seating area. So I asked, hey, um, are any of you named John? And the guy who's sitting next to me says, yeah, well, that's my name. And I said, oh, well, that's cool. Well, I'm on a treasure hunt and, and uh, God led me to you to let you know that you're his treasure. Do you have anything going on in your body that you need heal, healing for? And, and I had ankles. On, on my treasure map. And he goes, oh, well, yeah, I've got actually itchy ankles. I'm like, what? You've got itchy ankles? Well, do you have a finger itching? He goes, no, I actually have a rash that goes from my all the way up my ankles into my calf, and it's beet red, and it hurts. It's so itchy. And the guy sitting next to him is like, whoa, are you kidding me? Like, is this thing contagious? Because I've been showering after you've been in there, and like, dude, this is weird. And he goes, no, 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 it's not. But all of a sudden, he you know, he puts his leg up on the, on the seat and he goes, well, can you take care of it? And I'm like, absolutely I can. Meanwhile, my son Chad brings these pastors back and we watch as the redness in his ankle and up to his calf completely leaves. He's completely healed. Then my son Chad, he says, hey, does anybody have back pain? Because I have that on my treasure map here. And the one guy next to him had back pain. He gets completely healed. Then one of the pastors says, well, does somebody here have whiplash? Because that's what I've got on my treasure map. And the, the one girl said, yeah, I just got in a tra traffic accident a week ago, and I have whiplash really bad, and um, but I don't have insurance, so I couldn't get it taken care of. And, and so the back guy gets healed. The whiplash girl gets healed. And I said, hey, would you guys like to meet the Jesus who just healed you? And they're like, yeah, absolutely. And now they're, they're all standing up and they're looking down the street both ways as though Jesus like is coming down the street. And like, we've got this guy that we've been hiding down the street that's going to come and say, Hey, you've been on reality TV. This is all a big joke or whatever. And I go, no, no, no. I'm talking about the God of the universe, Jesus. And they're like, what? I said, yeah, the God of the universe who just healed you guys wants to live in your hearts. He wants to give you guys his a destiny and a purpose. And, and they go, the, the God of the universe? Like, did you know what we were talking about before you came up to our table? And I go, no, I didn't. What were you talking about? Well, we were just all sitting around saying, we need to go on an adventure and find God. And we're going to need to go to India. We're going to need to go to China. We're going to need to go to all these different places to find God. But like, I think we just found him. And so once again, like I just like had them put out their hands and they received the Holy Spirit. They asked Jesus to come live in their lives. Now they want, you know, to know all about Jesus and the pastor that of the church that we were with, like doing the treasure hunt. He follows up with them. They're following Jesus. And that's what a treasure hunt's all about. God wants us to have an encounter so that we become an encounter so that others can have an encounter. And as we view people as God's treasure, that God wants to find, 
And he wants to lead us towards. We'll, we'll be so much more open to asking the Holy Spirit for clues to go out and find these people that God so desperately wants to touch because they are all his treasures. God bless you and happy witnessing.